It's no secret that Alibaba is a massive company. Luckily, there are some great minds out there thinking about Alibaba that we can use to help us understand this pretty complicated company. In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the main resources that I've been using to help me wrap my head around Alibaba's complicated business. I'll leave links to all these resources in the video description below. And please let me know in the comments if you have found any great Alibaba resources that I haven't mentioned here. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a greater understanding of Alibaba's business and perhaps where to look next for more exploration. Some of these sources are extremely bullish on Alibaba's business and some call it an outright fraud. So who's right and who's wrong? When I'm looking at a company, I do want to understand the core bull thesis, but it's also really important to understand what others see about the company that might make it a bad investment in the future. Okay, let's check out some of these resources. So I recently took my first flight since the beginning of the pandemic, and I took a book along with me called Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built. Um, this is a great exploration for getting an understanding of the beginnings of both Jack Ma's personal biz and business history and the beginnings of Alibaba itself. So far it's been a pretty easy and entertaining read, but I'm only about halfway through it and it's not going to be a replacement for reading, for instance, the annual report. You won't get that much of an insight into Alibaba, but if you want to understand the history of the company and the history of what makes Jack Ma tick, then you should really read this book. And it came out, I think, in 2017, so some of the information isn't really as relevant, the specific business information. So, so far, I can't remember any references to the Alibaba cloud business, which, of course, is going to be a big component of the business going forward. So I just finished reading the chapter that discusses Alibaba and its early attempts at financing, trying to raise money from Goldman Sachs and eventually Masayoshi Son from SoftBank. The first chapter from a business perspective is probably the most important one because it describes pretty in depth uh, the state of the online retailing economy in China and the three main pillars of Alibaba's business. For instance, the first chapter is called the Iron Triangle, and it talks about what at this time was, were considered the three main pillars of Alibaba's business, which is the e-commerce business, the stake in Ant Financial, which is now Ant Group, and the logistics business. There are also chapters exploring Jack's childhood, where he went from basically a child trying to practice English as much as possible to his journey becoming a English teacher, even after a less than impressive college track record. For instance, he famously struggles in math class and he barely earns enough points on the math tests to get into basically a community college in his local hometown. But as you'll see through reading the book, Jack is extremely scrappy and resourceful and pretty much relentless. He doesn't give up at all costs. We read about Jack's early business failures and his foray into entrepreneurship that eventually leads him to found Alibaba. Now, I certainly wasn't paying attention too much to the markets around the time that Alibaba was just beginning to come up and the internet bubble of the late 90s was happening. So it's really fascinating to see that from a perspective of Chinese companies. For instance, the book talks a lot about the dominance of Yahoo in those early days, and I just find that to be kind of funny because of where Yahoo is today as a business. But anyway, check this book out. It is pretty good. Let me know if you want me to do sort of a full summary on this book. Uh, just let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see something like that. Next up, we're gonna talk about a newsletter that is one of the more bullish cases that I've read about Alibaba. Now this came across my radar in early January of 2021, and it's written by a guy named Packy McCormick. He has a Substack newsletter called Not Boring, and I would highly recommend that you at least follow him on Twitter or subscribe to his newsletter here, because he provides a lot of useful insights to a bunch of different companies, and it's some great and entertaining analysis. But the main premise of his article is that basically Alibaba is extremely undervalued, especially when you compare it to a company like Amazon. Packy wrote this at the time when it was unclear what had happened to Jack Ma after the falling out with the Ant Financial IPO attempt. After the whole debacle, Alibaba had dropped about a quarter since its all-time highs, and that basically prompted Packy to re-explore this company. What's really great about this article is it gives a pretty concise summary of a lot of the content that's actually in Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built by Duncan Clark. Packy talks a lot about the early story of Jack Ma and Alibaba. So if you wanna get some insight about the times of those company without having to read the book, then definitely check out the, this article here. He also explores Jack Ma's strategy with the company, the current state of Alibaba, 
he gives a pretty thorough comparison of Alibaba to Amazon based on some valuation metrics. He talks a lot about the business segments, including Alibaba Financial, some of their acquisitions, and the Ant Financial debacle and fiasco. The summary at the end is really good. Basically, his idea is that Alibaba traded at a 72% discount to Amazon, and by now that discount has probably grown larger in his book considering the stock price has further declined from this level in early January. And all of that is despite the fact that it's the world's largest retailer by gross merchandise volume, and it's China's largest cloud provider, and many other ideas that you'll explore more closely in Packy's article. Next up is an article by Lillian Lee, who many people actually interpreted this as a bear case for Alibaba. But Lillian has publicly said on Twitter that that's actually not the case. She's a large shareholder for Alibaba and that people are just missing the context based on reading this article. So Lillian wrote this as actually a little bit of a reaction to Packy's article. Uh, she didn't necessarily disagree with it, but she thinks that it lacked some local context and character that she is more able to give us some insight on. And if you wanna start investing in China in particular, then it's almost a must to subscribe to Lillian's uh, Substack and also definitely follow her on Twitter. She provides some of the best content on Chinese companies that I've read and it certainly helped me start to understand a little bit more what's going on. So basically the main idea for her piece is not that Alibaba is a bad company or that it's gonna crash and burn. It's far from that. She's simply saying that it's no longer a hyper growth company as the likes of perhaps a Pindua Duo. I mean, that's no surprise to me at least. The company is quite mature and it does have a lot of segments that will continue to grow, but the e-commerce business all around the world is quite saturated. And Lillian helpfully points out that the competition is extremely fierce. That's something that I keep reading over and over again. From what I'm understanding from Lillian's writing, Alibaba is sort of the Goliath of e-commerce in China and there are a bunch of Davids popping up trying to take away their market share. Basically one of her main complaints is that Alibaba has its hands in so many different businesses that it's not really focusing on a single one and doing one very well. For instance, she says that Alibaba is losing out in a lot of categories where upstarts are a lot more successful, such as short form video where TikTok has basically eaten Alibaba's lunch and in other sectors like food delivery. I think one of the core pieces for Alibaba going forward is the potential growth and impact that the cloud computing business is going to have in the future. But as we can see, it is growing very fast, but the sector is still so small in China that it's not really certain when or how long it's gonna take for us to see major profitability and major growth continuing in the future for that sector. It's a similar idea with their logistics company. It is growing at a rapid rate, but it only makes up a tiny fraction of Alibaba's business right now. Another key idea that she presents is that the Chinese market can be fragmented into high-end, middle-end, and low-end. I guess that's pretty much similar in the United States as well. But Alibaba is sitting there and it's getting beaten down by JD at the top, at the high-end. And then at the low-end, Pinduoduo is quickly eating away at their market share there. So if we couple that with the density of the population that's still in tier three to tier five cities, which would be on the lower end of the economic spectrum, we're, we might see Alibaba's market share continue to decline as those populations continue to rise up to maybe a more middle-class economic state. One of the bull cases that you can take away from this article is that Alibaba has created a best-in-class data moat around their customers. Basically, Alibaba knows their customers really well and has the products to continue to offer them to them. So again, going forward, Alibaba's journey isn't going to be easy, but it does not mean that there's gonna to be total despair for Alibaba going forward. Okay, so Lillian gave a more constructive view that wasn't potentially all rosy for Alibaba, but this next resource that I recently found does not believe in the future of Alibaba at all. In fact, he outright calls it a scam. So I'll admit that I haven't read this too thoroughly, but it is something that I'm going to dig into a lot more. This author is anonymous, but they explore basically the accounting practices of Alibaba. And in this particular article, he wants to discuss the Ant Group IPO and basically calls it a complete scam. Basically, as you can see with this text in red, 
Um, his opinion of Alibaba's accounting practices is not high. The first line of this says, what you're about to read is a distillation of what should be either the foundation of a graduate school dissertation or a federal securities fraud complaint indictment. Your choice depending on function preference. So this author is claiming that Alibaba and or Ant Group are basically misrepresenting their financial situation. So this article is really trying to explore the accounting shenanigans that may or may not be going on with Alibaba. However, on the other hand, we have great investors like Charlie Munger and Monish Pabrai who don't necessarily see these same red flags. This article is really heavy on accounting. Regardless of the complexity, I think it's important that every potential investor for Alibaba read this just to get another side and another view of what might not go right with Alibaba. For example, if management is putting out shoddy financials or straight up lying, then that's gonna be a huge impact for Alibaba investors in the future, obviously. And finally, we have the annual report for Alibaba. Now, this is probably something that every person who wants to invest in Alibaba should read. Uh, the annual reports are excellent because, especially if you read multiple going back through the years, because you can see what management said, say 10 years ago, and then track how their statements have changed or how the outcome of the business has matched with their expectations back in the day. Also, you can get a better understanding of all the individual business segments. Although as that last author might say, it's quite convoluted. And again, if you want the financial information straight from the horse's mouth, you definitely need to read the annual report. And as with every annual report, you probably don't need to read every single word that's in there, but there are a lot of sections, including management's discussion of the business and business overview segments and the consolidated financial statements are really the main key highlights. I also wanna mention again that there is a great podcast called Business Breakdowns that's hosted by Patrick O'Shaughnessy, where he had a guest speaker, Ram Paramaswaran on, who really went deep into a discussion of Alibaba as well. I recently made a video over here that discusses the Business Breakdowns podcast episode where there was a really in-depth discussion about Alibaba. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. I really appreciate you sticking to the end of this video. Thank you so much for your time and I will see you in the next video.